Hey, everybody, this is Anthony Brogdon with Strong Inspirations. You are back at me. I'm at you. We at each other once again, my friends. I really appreciate you watching me because I can feel you out there. Things are happening. Did you know that, uh, and did you see the video where I told you all I got big news? Well, let me tell you once again, I had a guy on the channel from Quindaro, Kansas. Look for that video. The slaves walked across the, the river, the pond, the lake when it froze over. From Missouri, they ended up in this town. I'm having a festival there next year. Little old me, I'm having a festival and I want 500 to 1,000 of y'all, my brothers and sisters, to come. We're going to have a party that Friday night and a burn. So wear your dusty blue jeans. We're going to drink. If you do drink, we're going to have a little moonshine, if there's such thing as that. We're going to have some sweet tea, some Kool-Aid. We're going to play some music, up-to-date music but some of the other music too, right? Check it out. And then on Saturday, we're gonna have a tour. We're gonna have people can go and, and tour the city and see where them slaves crossed the river and where they ended up. And, the, and, and like the guy who I interviewed on, his on the channel, his great, great grandfather uh, owned a business once he got over there. Man, we some bad mother scooters. My man got out of freedom. Out of, I mean, out of slavery, out of, out of being enslaved. And then he was so tight, he started his own business. We're going to go to the site where the business was and where they got school and education and all that in Quindaro, Kansas. I'm going to tell you how to get there. It's going to be like, you know, one fee to, to, to attend everything. It's going to be nice. I'm telling you, watch. I know I, I got this down and they in on it. And that's going to probably be in May or June. So we, we, we're working on the date now. And then I'm going to do another one of them next year where we're going to go to a site that they celebrate the 8th of August. And I, I'm working on it. I, I can't tell you no more just yet, but give me another month or two. This is how I'm growing with this channel. We're going places. I want to meet you all. Y'all out there looking at me, I want to see you and shake your hand. So that's coming up in 2020, right? 2022. Uh, well, the other thing I really want you to do, and you know what I'm about to say, my brothers and my sisters, come on and hit that subscribe button. Last night, I had 45 new subscribers. Hmm. And one night, I woke up this morning, because every time I wake up, I get up early. You know, I got stuff on my mind, and the sun wakes me up and all that. And I looked up, and it was 45 new people that hit the subscribe button last night. People are liking the videos. I can see my likes is up. And I'm getting comments. People saying one thing, I, I, I check this out. I got a video on, I, I know the sister, she's sitting there. She said, come on, man. I said, hold on, let me tell my story. You know, people got to tell it, I got to tell it. <laughs> I got one video up there, you should look at this one. This brother, he goes back to the mid 1700s finding his family. So it's on the channel. And I got a bunch of people that posted said, well, hey, man, I go back to the 1600s. I said, man, you go back that far, come on the channel. I'm having them on next week. It's that kind of thing going down. <laughs> this, is, this, this, this has gotten serious. And I enjoy doing this. Strong inspirations. So like, uh, subscribe. Like this video, I'm telling you, the sister, she's sitting there, she's smiling. She said, I got something that I know I'm going to put on your head. You're going to like it. Watch. And then I want you to hit the notifications bell. For when I put these videos up, I put two up this week. I got another two more I'm going to be putting up anytime now. I ain't going to tell you when because it, it got to hit me. It's a feeling I get. And I got two more to be putting up this week, if not three. And uh, that hit that notification bell tell you that you know there's a new video. And then my friends, let me tell you what I really I, I, I really would appreciate you doing along with those things is just tell somebody about strong inspiration. Don't keep it to yourself. 
You running around here like you know everything and you got it off the channel and don't want to tell nobody where you got it from. That don't make sense. Let this thing go. Let them people hear these stories. Let them people know how great we are. Always have been. You can't hold us back. Ain't no way. We go out of slavery and then get an education and graduate from Harvard's, Yale's, open up businesses. Can't stop us. And then, and, and so let me say this. One more thing, my sister, my guest, one more thing. I use that word strong a lot. Strong stands for strength, tenacity, resilience, and a sense of oneness, nobility, and grace. That's my introduction to the sister on the channel. She's strong. I know she's strong. Come on, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. I'm going to get there. My name is Emily Hudson. Yep. And uh, I live in Hazard, Kentucky, Perry County. And that's deep in the Appalachian Mountains. Okay. And, and um, okay. So and now, one, now, hold on. How you, I mean, let me get on you just a second. How you, how you live there? Is that where you grew up? How you, how you get there? See, now, why would you ask that question? Do you think there's no black folks that live not, down I, here? It's not that I don't think that. I just, uh, you know, I wonder how it happened. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I was I born and raised here. Born and raised here. And um, um, I've lived um, in uh, for a while in Indianapolis, Indiana, as well as Cleveland, Ohio, in the big cities. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was like, um, you know, that story that you, that cartoon that you, you know, used to come on about the country mouse uh, going to visit his cousin in the city. Yep. And uh, that's what it felt like okay. <laughs> coming from where I, you know, lived and going to the cities. Okay, let me, um, let me ask you this. How about this? I, let me ask you, how, how big is your town? Uh, okay. Uh, my town is probably under uh, 6,000 people or county. According to our latest census, is uh, probably around twenty-five thousand uh, plus a little bit, and um, the black population um, is about one point six percent, and uh, ninety-five point uh, something percent uh, white, and then one point six percent black, and then um, there's um, um, you know, others be, you know, that's less than that, um, okay. you know, Hispanic, Native American, um, multiracial, uh, okay. less than that. Uh, but, you know, I've always said about the, here in the mountains that these census numbers may not reflect the accurate count because, um, you know, a lot of folks just don't fill out those census papers. Oh, and yeah, um, sure, and that sure, and that's sure. why it's, it's important to do that so that we can be counted and numbered right. and um uh because i always believe that there's a little bit more here uh in the area than what's reported okay let me ask you so where where is the appalachian mountain are you you on flatland you're not in the mountain right oh oh mountains mountains um you know the appalachian mountains run uh down you know from Pennsylvania up and around and run all the way down, um, you know, south. Uh, but right here, uh, we're, you know, bordered by West Virginia, uh, Virginia. Um, so we're right here in the mountains. Okay. Okay. So is uh is 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 your town uh is it is uh, yeah, it's small. So is it is it rural? Do you like live on a farm or anything like that? We have farms. I mean, there's farms around. Um, I don't live on a farm. Okay. Um, but um, um, that was farming, you know, was a big thing. Um, uh, when my mom uh, was a little girl and her dad, my grandpa, um, he had a farm. Uh, but okay. it's, it's not like what you would picture today okay. uh, because, um, um, you know, they, they grew their own crops they okay. you know they had their own crops they had their, he had his own hogs and cows and Ooh. chickens and yeah, love and it. um you know that that kind of a thing uh but it's not on a flat land setting <laughs> okay okay yeah okay. and you know uh, how to but, wring a chicken's neck 
Well, I don't. Yeah. But uh, I've seen it done. It You've was like it the long, generation, that generation yeah. before me. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. So now um, you got a, a, a dashiki on. You, 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 you walk around town like that and they wondering, hey, who is this lady or something? Ain't you shaking things up down there? Uh, now, this, this is what I call, uh, we call it a moo-moo. And um, it's just comfortable. And, um, you know, I like the word because it's comfortable and colorful. Okay, but hold on. But aren't you shaking things up wearing that? They wondering who, you, you <laughs> African and that kind of thing, right? Well, it's it just shake folks up. I can't imagine. And 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 so uh, I'm, I'm I got a couple more questions. Do is 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 there? Uh, how about this one? Now, I don't mean no. Were you were you ever called a nigger? Um, I have not been called that personally, but uh, I mean the word is all around. Is that and, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. The word is all around, and. Um, um, you know, it was uh, like I was born in 1956, and that mm. was when, um, you know, desegregation was going on and everything. And, yeah. and um, but I, I have, uh, you know, been involved like in the 80s and early 90s. I did a lot of oral history where I interviewed a lot of people, okay. uh, a lot of black folks, and uh, get their stories. And, um, um, and they were often called, you know, you know, really? that I mean, you gotta say the word I do, but I don't mean no disrespect. Yeah. But yeah. but but did you ever see a black only or white only signs? Um, again, not it, not in my time. Now in my in my mother's time, um, you know that 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 generation, yes. Um, and um, you know, she was telling the story about you know the bus station, uh, the Graham bus station, mm -hmm. uh, during her time. And uh, right now, today, that building has been turned into a arts station, arts place. Okay. And uh, but she tells the story about you know the blacks had to go around in the back. Yeah. Um, there was a room where they could go and like they had a little restaurant in it, and uh, the back the blacks had to go around the back and um, you know get their food and and uh, but she said that uh, um, her sister in law, my and my aunt was very light skinned um that she actually worked the front um uh at, at, at in the little place where they would um uh, folks would come in and uh, pick up their food the white part that she would work there and um she was very mm -hmm. light skinned um but um but it was a lot of the you know white whites only blacks only this door and so forth that it was it was here just like it was in the deep south it was here yeah did you did you go to all black school grade school and that kind of thing yeah uh, by the time um you know i came along everything was um integrated okay okay um, but um uh I, I will share you know this because during some of my research and so forth here in prairie county the first um official because you know black kids uh they went to school in uh they had classes in a, a, a church they had classes in um this building they called a hole in the wall um and uh, there was a couple of uh, uh businesses there there was a masonic uh place there but on the top floor they would have classes in 1926 there's one uh, city or uh, town uh, that's about oh, 10 12 miles uh, away from hazard uh, south of hazard called Bico and um, that became the site of the first official black high school in our county and it was called Higgins High School Higgins High School and the land was donated by a black man um, George Higgins and he was also a, a preacher, a minister. Okay. And um, you know, that that tells you that back then, you know, blacks own land. Yeah. Um, and um, the building was was built uh, with the assistance of Rosenwald funds. And okay, um, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And um, okay. but um, um, so that was the first official um, high school, and kids from. 
um, hazard were bussed up to, they, they would catch a bus and, and go up there for high school. Um, they had basketball teams, the Higgin High uh, Mountaineers. Yeah. Um, and then it grew, the numbers grew and the distance, you know, was a little much. So in 1936, they uh, built a high school for blacks here in town. And it was called Liberty, Liberty High School. And it okay. uh, went all the way up through the time of, of um, uh, the integration. Okay, I got uh, you. But, yeah, th but this, this school, while the kids, the black kids uh, went to, it also had elementary grades in it. Okay. Um, um, but uh, a lot of the teachers, um, maybe eight or nine teachers, um, they would get their training from, uh, most of them got them from um, uh, Kentucky State University, what it's called now. Some went to Knoxville, Tennessee, and got their certifications and so yeah, forth. The and um, yeah, right so. now, that, now, uh, let me ask you this, uh, if you don't mind, uh, and I'm, we're gonna go to the story. Did growing up, did you know your place as a black person in that town that you don't go on the other side of town where the white folks were? You you can't be in the downtown at night, uh, that kind of thing? Um, you know, it wasn't as um, blatant. It was kind of, um, uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I'll give you an example. There was a um, swimming pool and city pool. I would guess you would call it a city pool. Yeah. We know we know the blacks couldn't go there. Uh, we were teenagers, and I, I remember. Uh, uh, some folks may be hearing this for the first time. My brothers, they would sneak at night and go and swim. Oh really? And uh, yes, you know, but, but but they couldn't go during the day, and um, um. But uh, I remember, I remember the movie theater. Uh, and, 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 you know, this is, this is on the, I guess, the edge of all of that. Um, and most of the times the blacks would sit up in the balcony okay. and, you know, the whites would sit below, but it wasn't no, there wasn't any signs or anything that yeah. says, you know, you got to yeah. go up there. It was just like a given kind of thing. And I remember one time that um, I decided to sit downstairs and um, you know nobody says you know you're not supposed to be in you know downstairs or anything like that um but you, you just had a funny feeling you yeah. know but um because that's the way it had been but um you know it's like when the barriers is removed uh move out from where you were and go and go you know into those places where you couldn't go before yeah, uh, it's like the barriers are removed, but sometimes it's a mindset. Yeah, you right, know, you, right. You're still behind that. that yeah, barrier. right, right. Yeah. What was there a, a black owned business? Did y'all did y'all have a, a neighborhood, you know, like a, a certain area of town that the blacks lived and there were, you know, the convenience stores or whatever you call them in that area? Well, back in thought? back in the oh, I would say. um Back in the 30s, 40s, um, early 50s, there, there was black owned businesses. There was, you know, barber shops, press shops, restaurants. Um, uh, there, there was quite a few businesses and um, uh, boarding houses, um, they owned property. Um, and then, and this, and this too was during the, the time when coal, you know, we're a coal mining area. Okay. So, uh, okay. you know, coal, coal was a big thing. And um, the, the first railroad came into Hazard in 1912. And that began to open up things. Um, and the coal mining, um, they got a really big boost, like World War I, around that time, the, the demand for coal. And so what, what would happen, um, they would run the trains down south, uh, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, um, even uh, Mississippi, they would go down and, and bring 
men back up to work in the mines. And this is how a lot of black men, uh, and they brought their families. And this is, this is how a lot of black people came into our area. Okay, at that time. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Uh, was there a, uh, what's the, is, is, what's the, the black side of town? Is it, does it have a name? Um, I don't think there was a black side, uh, but there was, you know, black communities at that time. Right. Um, and um, uh, Liberty Street, and this is the high school was built in that little uh, okay, in that community. Area. It was also you. called Big Bottoms. Um, uh, Backwoods um, is where um, a lot of black families lived. Um, okay, I got you. Town Mountain, uh, you know, there was, so there was communities. I got uh, you, you know, again, we're a small town. Right, so, right, right, right. I yeah. got you. Yeah. Is there is there a a black history event that happened in the town? Uh, and I, I don't mean to, uh, you know, was, was there a riot, a massacre? They did something, no. protest, any of that kind of thing that happened there? Um, re you know, recently, um, there was a um, you know, recently, um, you know, with the George Floyd, um, you know, incident that occurred and. Right. Um, you know, we had a, a peaceful protest. Um, there has, you know, there's there's been, you know, racial violence, just like anywhere else. Oh, really? Um, there's a organization that is um, in the process of uh, doing. It's called a Community uh, Remembrance Project, and they they are um, tracking down all the places. Um, here where lynchings occurred and um you know much much like the uh, uh remembrance project in uh is it alabama right. um but um and uh you know i was just talking to someone today you know about that looking up some information and uh -huh. and um you know there there actually was one uh not actually lynched here uh in um hazard uh, but um uh, the incident occurred here. The uh, uh, black guy was jailed here, but there was men that drug him out of the jail and carried him over into the next county, and um, and 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 hung him there. Wow! Um, uh, so, over, you know, uh, a woman? Did they say he raped a woman? No, no, it wasn't that. It, no, it wasn't that. Um, um, I think it was it was a fight, and and the man um, uh, died um from his injuries um but you know i think about it sometimes you know and this this these were just volatile times and the things uh because i remember growing up and and um you know watching and hearing about the things that was going on uh you know in the deep south yeah and uh you know the same mindsets and the same things were going on here but on a smaller scale yeah and, so you're, um, you're, but you're in the South, though, aren't you? Are, are you? Cause it is the, the, it is, it is the South, but it's not the deep, deep it's South. It's not the deep, deep South. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are there plantations? Were there slaves uh, in your town? Um, during that time, yeah, there were um, um, people who were enslaved. As a, a matter of fact, there's one of the, one of the prominent uh, Black families, uh, Combs, is um, they... Um, there's the two brothers that were enslaved. And um, when they uh, got their freedom, they actually uh, came into possession of land. And um, um, there was a, a, a whole you know, a family. They became doctors, they became teachers, okay, uh, business it. owners. Um, and, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there were there were no plantations, no, nothing like that. Um, but there there were uh, there was enslavement. Yeah, there's no auction site there, and nothing like no, that. No, yeah. uh, not here. Uh, one more thing. Uh, now, when when we when you, when you talk about your town, that, that the first thing that comes to mind is Dukes of Hazard. Does that got something to do with it? <laughs> Everybody thinks that. Everybody yeah, yeah, thinks that's that, that's not the case though. No. Uh, okay. Uh, Hazard County, I think, is in. Um, I want to say Georgia. I, I I could be wrong about that, but I think it's down in Georgia. It's a county, 
uh, H-A-Z-Z-A-R-D, but we are H-A-Z-A-R-D. Oh, so one Z. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you 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 uh, were telling me that you are at a museum, or did you start this museum? What's the story? What's the history to the museum? Okay, um, like I said, um, um, I did a lot of oral history uh, researching and interviewing uh, back in the early '80s, late '80s, and uh, well, earlier '80s and '90s, and uh, <clears throat> all that uh, history. Um, you know, it kind of uh, got put on the shelf. And um, uh, it wasn't until maybe a couple of years ago that um, the, all this was brought back around to me. And I guess it was for a, a time such as this. Um, but uh, to really get the history of our area documented and preserved, uh, because there is a rich history here. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, there is a perception that um, you know, there's no black folks that live in the mountains. I, I, when I was in Cleveland, Ohio, I worked for an organization, a black uh, black woman owned this organization, a nonprofit organization, but she really didn't know how to take me um, because, as far as she knew, and what media portrayed, there's no blacks that live down where I said I was from. Okay, and. Um, uh, and that and that's a perception that is uh, widespread, and um, so I, I wanted to um, get into this history of our area, our Black history, and um, uh, document it, preserve it, present it, so that uh, you know people will know, hey, we're here, and uh, make contributions, and in, in just about every area, okay. um, and um, so. So, um, so I started, um, it's the Southeast Kentucky African American Museum and Cultural Center. Right now, we have a um, social media presence. We're working on getting a physical site. Oh, okay, and, I um, got you. And uh, hopefully, you know, that, that will unfold soon. But right now, we have a Facebook page. Uh, if anybody want to find that, just Southeast Kentucky African American Museum and Cultural Center, and, you, and you'll find you. it. We have a website, I and uh, I really want to encourage you to kind of look at that website. Yeah, give us the website. It, yeah, it's it is um, uh, www.sekyaa. Um, MCC. African okay, American. we're gonna put just, all that in the description. Just the letters of that. Uh huh. Dot yeah, org. Yeah, Dot right. org. And um, uh, a lot of the things, you know, that I've been talking about, you'll, you'll find on that site and we're, um, I'll be uploading a lot more, um, some profiles and things this weekend. Uh, but, um, and you'll, you'll find uh, a lot of information on the uh, high school's pictures and, uh, you know, things like that. So, okay. but we just started the website uh, uh, earlier part of this year. Okay. And um and so we're we're still building that. We have a Twitter and a YouTube page yeah, that I just came up. So now, do uh, you but, have any artifacts uh uh that you will be able to put in the in the website uh, in the we, museum and that kind have, of thing? We have people waiting for the physical site because they have artifacts to donate. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's and that's uh so we're we're looking forward to that. Um, can you can you do a, one other thing here, right quick? Can you can you give me a let's say two stories, two very you know maybe unique stories of some history that happened there that you will chronicle in the museum? Um. Well, there's you know there's quite a few with the high school, uh, um, uh, and then you know several people. There's the Combs family. There's another family, Olinger family. We want to make sure that we, you know, those are the first two, I would say, families of Combs and the Olingers. Um, Daniel Boone Olinger uh, came up from Virginia and because um, um, he found out you can own land, he came and then went back, you know, got his family and so forth. So we had the Combs and Olingers. And this, again, was... Um, uh, back in the uh, uh, before 1900, and um, uh, but you know it, those two families, um, uh, some other family names, Cornets and um, uh, so forth. Okay. Um, 
okay, coal miners, the, the, the course of coal mining, because uh, there was a lot of blacks that worked in the mine. Um, so those. those I got you. I got. You. How, how how devastating was it to work in the mines? Was that? I mean, you your lifespan was was really uh, you know sniffing that coal. That that didn't you didn't make. You didn't make it to 50, I guess, uh, something like that. What was, how devastating was that? Well, they made it be, you know, past 50, but uh, it was hard because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, the miners, black and white, you know, I mean, they, you know, contracted black lung disease, yeah. uh, being in those, you know, close quarters. Um, one time I um, went on a tour uh, of a coal mine and, um, you know, they 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 had you uh, put on the the hat right. uh, right. with the light and um, yeah. suit up in overalls and boots and and uh, you would sit in the uh, man man trip um, of what they would call that car and and um, I remember the man saying, okay, now when when you hear me say whatever it was he was going to say, make sure you duck. And uh, so we were going along in, into the mines and, you know, he would say it and, and uh, everybody ducked because it was so, um, um, so low. Yeah. yeah, we were, the, the roof all of a sudden was right above your head. And then we came out uh, into, um, you know, a larger room and um, everybody got out of the cart and uh, I was the only one, I'm sure, I'm the only one that could stand up um everyone else was all bent over oh. and that's why that's why you see a lot of coal miners you know uh in their later age bent over you know because you could not stand up in yeah. a lot of the places in the mines yeah um, was, did you, could you you could get claustrophobic uh doing that too didn't it seem like uh yeah that, that you had could. to be kind of scary you could yeah you could. The, yeah. is is the walls of the coal mine uh is it all black um, you know, I, I can't remember, but yeah, there are seams of coal and, um, and that's what they're going in, you know, to dig. So it is, yeah, black, it's the coal. Um, and, you know, back in those early days, uh, they didn't have a lot of equipment like they do today. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, they would go in and hand, hand pick it out and, uh, with a pick and, um, you know, uh, bring it out yeah and so you know those were the coal mines um the companies that would come in and a lot of um uh, coal camps a lot of the you know the houses um uh, were in the coal camps and they had the commissary yeah. and um you know where they did most of their shopping and um um my aunt uh my my um uh, aunt and uncle uh, lived in a uh, coal camp um, in Kodak, Kentucky, which is on the other side of Vico, owned by the Mim Haskins Mines uh, Mining Company. And um, they lived in that coal camp. And when we were little, when we were kids, and my dad would take us up into the camp uh, to visit. And, um, um, you know, I can just uh, remember, you know, the houses looking the same and the Black families would live up in the head of the um um up in the holler and, and the, the white families were uh down below when you first go in in the holler uh, what does that mean um okay in the in, the in the mountain or it, uh, it, a holler is it's it's a oh how can i explain the holler um it is a it's not on the mountain or um but it's, it's like a it's like a uh, valley kind of a thing okay and you know and you 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 go up um up in it and um a lot of times you know the roads are narrow and but there's hills on either side and like we went up in kodak and um there was a creek on the right side and there's the, the coal tracks and the cars on on the left side the coal temple and um but uh, I guess uh, the only way I can describe that yeah, is like yeah. little but valleys. You, 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 I guess you would also just kind of assume that was the worst part of where you want to live. That's where they had the black people, I would think, right? Uh, well, you know. Not necessarily then. Not necessarily. Okay, I like it. I like it. Not necessarily. I like it. You know, I, I think about, um, 
um, the stories, you know, some things my mom, you know, used to tell me and um, how they, you know, lived and didn't have a lot of things. And, you know, and, and they said, you know, they weren't sad about it um, because they had all their needs met. Okay. And, um, okay, you know, I love it. So, you know, they didn't have to have, uh, well, you, you know, you might say, well, you know, these folks down here had all of this, but they said that they had what they needed. I got you. you. Know, I her got dad, you. my grandpa, you know, he, like I said, you know, he, he farmed and had hogs and um, cows and chickens, and he even had a mine, a little mine below uh, the hill where he would go in and, and um, um, with his pick and, and get, get coal that he would use, you know, for, to keep them uh, warm and, okay, I and got you. Uh, this kind of a self-sufficient. I got you. I love it. Self-sufficient kind of thing. I love it. And, uh, yeah. I just know, I just know that if anything happened today and this generation, including myself, you know, had to be able to survive, um, we wouldn't know how to. I got you. But see, they knew how to survive. Yeah, I got you. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, as we come to a close, is there a, a question that I haven't asked you or something that you wanted to talk about that I did, we just haven't touched upon per se? I think we covered. Uh, we covered, okay. I think we covered. Uh, the, you know, let me ask you this. Then. How about this one? Is there a festival there? that uh, all the people come to black and white or just black people that they celebrate something? Is it, yeah, it's called the Black Gold Festival. Okay. Black Gold is cold. That's, a, that's what they call it, Black Gold Festival. And it's, it's coming up in September. And um, yeah, black and white um, uh, comes from all over, um, all over the, the area. Okay. And um, this, is the, this year is the 40th year. Oh really? Okay. And uh, yeah, so. Okay, and that okay, Black Gold Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, how about this? What what kind of music do you listen to? Is that is that is that bluegrass music or <laughs> is there some uh, name to the music? That, okay, that I'll, I'll I'll say this. Um, I'm I, because I, I grew up in Appalachia. I grew up in 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 an, an experience in Appalachian culture as well as Black culture. And, um, you know, so I, I claim both. And when I was growing up, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of, um, um, I'd say access to a lot of, you know, black music and so forth. I remember um, listening on the radio, I've got a radio channel a station. Uh, I think it came out of Knoxville, Randy's Record Mart. Okay. And uh, they played a lot of, uh, you know, black music. Right. Um, but, um, um, I wanted to be a country, a country a Western singer when oh, I was a teenager. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, got, I, I, I love I, it. I asked my mama, to, you know, and dad to buy me a guitar, and they bought they bought me a guitar, and you know, I pluck around on it. And I you know. got you. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> but, I love um, it. You know, I, how about I, one I, more because I, I like this angle. Is there a particular type of uh, uh, cuisine that you all eat? Uh, being in that area that you, you know, you cook real well or something like that? Is there anything like that? I was talking to someone about this the other day because uh, we were talking about Appalachian culture and African-American culture uh, here and how they uh, intercross, they cross uh, with each other, intersect with each other. You know, the traditional Appalachian, one of the traditional Appalachian um, meals, you know, you could you can go and, even, you know, I mean, way back um, you know, then, um, car, um, soup beans and cornbread and onion, big slab of onion. Um, and what kind of beans? Soup beans. Never heard of them. You had, you've never heard of soup beans? No. Nah. Uh, let me see what you might call them. It, it, it's um, not pork and beans. It's no, not, they're not pork. They're not pork it, and beans. Is it black eyes? They're not black eyed peas. There's, there's soup beans, pinto beans. Pinto, okay. We call them soup beans. Okay. But you can find that on the table um, at the Black family uh, up in the holler and on the table of the white family uh, below. So, I mean, there are certain, certain foods and certain things that, you know, 
are um, just related to both. Yeah, but, I got uh, you. I got you. Um, I love it. Well, hey, I, I thank you so very much for being on the channel. Everybody, uh, let me say this. I, I kind of, I was so excited. I forgot one thing to do. Uh, <laughs> it, it, you know, I'm a filmmaker. I did this documentary on the rise of Black business in America. It's called Business in the Black. How slaves learn how to read and write. How slaves, uh, what them races did to destroy Black business districts across America. How slaves uh, uh, got uh, and own businesses, even back at yeah, like say slaves and all the way through the uh, the 1960s, I cover in my film. It's streaming on Amazon, and then I wrote the book on it. It's called Black Business Book. It covers a lot of the same uh, what the movie does, but it's it's just more comprehensive. This has got over 200 facts in it. So I I remiss. I know you. I was waiting to hear my pitch, and uh, I was just you know. <laughs> kind of caught off guard talking about the uh, festival and that kind of thing. But in any event, that's what's happening. Uh, I, to my guests, I, I truly appreciate you coming on the show. I, I really want to come down there. Um, you know, maybe, more do, than you know maybe do a festival in that town. I, that, that might be, uh, you know, and try to get 500,000 people to come join me. So we, we'll talk offline. Uh, and right. see if how we might be able to make that happen. And, and then that could be a fundraiser for your museum. All right. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that, that, that's the angle. We're going to do it. And so I, I, I thank you for coming on and spending time. Um, uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so with all sincerity, I say to you, I want you to stay strong, stay safe, Stay on your grind. I love what you're doing down there. You're keeping that African history in front of them. You walk down the street, they wonder who you are. Those who don't know and everybody else, I'm sure they know you and they know that that's the kind of kind lady you are because you appreciate your heritage and you uplifting them people and you telling them some things. And then you're going to, and, and I know you're going to get that building for that museum and it's going to be big and bigger and bigger as it grows along throughout the years. And so I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, everybody hit the subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, because I know you didn't know some of those things, especially about them beans I never heard of. Um, <laughs> at, at, uh, hit the notifications bell and tell somebody about strong inspirations. All right? Because we're going to keep coming at you until you do. I, with that, I say bye-bye. We out.